Hey, what's up everyone? So the wife and I managed to save £90,000 in 12 months. Now that represents a 76% savings on our total combined income after tax. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how we did it and the top tips and tricks we used to ensure we were maximizing the amount we were saving each month. So you're probably thinking we both make a lot of money to be able to even save that much in one year. But the important figure to remember here and to focus on is the actual percentage we saved. So that 76% we saved is an extremely high number. You're also probably thinking, why do I need to actually save money in the first place? I mean, money comes and goes. You can always make more money, right? Also, you know, you only live once. Why not just spend it and just have fun? Here are some of the benefits I think you should consider when you're saving. One, if you save money, then you have the ability to invest. And if you can invest your money, then you can make more money in the future. And making more money in the future means you don't have to work so hard. You don't have to work to, you know, you're 65. You can maybe potentially retire early. The second thing is if you ever get into an emergency and you need to pull out a lot of money, so for example the car's broken down or you know something's wrong with the house and you need to pull out some money and, and fix it straight away, a lot of people are unable to do this because they don't have a savings or they don't have an emergency fund. So what they tend to do is put themselves in debt, borrow money from people or you know, use their credit cards or something like that to, to cover expenses. That also another thing is you know if you have more of a savings account then when you go out to per make big purchases like buying a house for example, then you have a lot more to put down in it as a deposit and therefore you take out less debt. And generally you just struggle less in the future. So if you think about, you know, when you're younger, you don't have much responsibilities and not many expenses, right, to take care of. So, you know, you can save a lot more money. When you're older, when you've got kids, family, and a lot more responsibilities, you find yourself needing a lot more money. So let's now move on to the next part of the video where we talk about how we were able to save such a high percentage of our income. And I'll break this into two parts. So the first part of this video will discuss the mechanics and the process around how you want to be saving your money every single month. And the second part of this video, we'll talk about some of the top tips and tricks we use to ensure we were squeezing every single pound we possibly could. And at the end of the video, I will show you the exact breakdown on how much we earned that year and how much we were saving per month and how we're able to get to that figure of £90,000 in 12 months. So stick around to the end of the video and if you'd like it, please smash the like button. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. There'll be plenty more videos coming out just like this one. So in this first part of the video, we'll talk about the process around how you want to be saving your money. So the process can be broken down into four step. So the first step is you have to figure out what exactly is your take home per month. So that's everything after tax. What exactly is your income per month? Now, if you've got a regular job like most of us, then yeah, that's an easy number to identify. It's just whatever you get paid into your current account. But if you're self-employed, then you need to figure out probably on average how much you earn per month and how much you take home after tax. Step two, calculate your bare minimum spending every month. So that is only the money you need or the spending you need to do to just survive each month. That's anything to do with housing, you know, paying your mortgage or your rent, any bills that come with it, your credit cards or loans and food and travel, just the things that get you by every month. So we're not talking about, you know, going on holiday, we're not talking about going to that expensive restaurant, we're not talking about going to that person's birthday and got to buy a hundred pound gift. Nothing like that, guys, just the bare minimum spending. The first step is do the following calculation, your income per month that we talked about in the first step minus your bare minimum spending. And that should give you the maximum potential savings you can make per month. Step four, now set up automatic bank transfers from the amount that you figured out or calculated in step three into your savings account. This last step has to happen up front. So the moment you get paid or the moment the, the money hits your bank account, that's when you need to make this transfer. In fact, most people fail after step one. And that's because what people tend to do is they'll get the money every single month. They'll spend as much as they want. And then at the end of the month, when whatever they're left with, that's what they'll transfer into their savings account. If you were to just make that simple switch where you do the savings or you do the transfer of how much you want to save up front, right at the begin when you get paid then I guarantee you your bank balance in your savings account will increase. So hopefully you understand the process now but let me take you through an actual worked example of exactly what I mean. So here is a simple diagram I put together to help illustrate what we're talking about. So step one income. Let's say for example your income per month after tax is £3,000. Okay now that comes directly into your bank account. Next step is calculating your bare minimum expenses. So let's say in this case it's £1,200. 
Third step here now is to calculate your maximum savings per month. That is your income minus the bare minimum expenses, which is £3,000 minus £1,200, which gives us £1,800. Now, in this example, £1,800 is the maximum you could possibly save per month. So the next step, step four, here is where we start setting up some standing orders to automatically tra transfer parts of this 1800 into two different accounts. Now I suggest you have three bank accounts, one for your current account, where the income goes into, one for something we call an emergency fund account, and a third one called a savings account. And the reason why we've got this emergency fund is because whether you like it or not, throughout the year, you will have cases where you need to pull out more money than just your bare minimum. So it's better to cover yourself up front. The whole idea here is we want to leave account three, the savings account, untouched as much as we possibly can. So I recommend in this case to put around two to five percent what's left of your maximum savings per month into an emergency fund. Okay, in this case, it's around 90 pounds. Now, hopefully that should cover you for any extra little bits and bobs that come up in the way. And then after that, whatever's remaining, technically you can directly put it into your savings account. So in this case, 95% is £1,710. Now, technically we can put all of that into your savings account. But again, I would add a bit more buffer in here just in case there's more expenses that come up that you just can't foresee. And that's it guys, if you're able to follow this four step process, and let's say you do this for one whole year, 12 months, you should save 20,520 pounds, which is roughly a 57% savings of your total income. They say if you are able to save between 40 to 60% of your total income after tax, then you'll be in a very good financial position and you'll be doing very well. You have more money to invest with, you have more money to put down a house deposit, and you increase your chances of retirement. Okay, so let's get on to the next part of the video where we talk about how we're gonna put this stuff into practice because you can't just sit around in your house doing nothing for the next 12 months, so we have to be as realistic as we can. Okay, so my first top tip is reducing the cost of housing. Now, the cost of housing is always going to be your biggest expense in your life. Now, if you can just reduce it for a short period of time, then you will save yourself a ton of money. In our case, we decided to completely eliminate the cost of housing and move in with my parents. In doing that, we managed to save around 20 to 30,000 pounds because we live in London and the cost of living and rent is just so high. Now, this is probably not an option for everyone, but if you're renting a place, maybe you can think about downsizing or downgrading to something cheaper. I mean, maybe you can do a flat share. You can save a lot of money that way too. If you've got yourself a mortgage, then maybe think about renting that place out and going somewhere cheaper. That way you can save money in a cheaper place and also possibly make rental income too. Next thing on this list is eliminate convenient ways of spending. The industry has made it so easy for us to pay for things these days and the whole point of it is so you can spend more. Try to make buying things harder for yourself. So I personally stopped using Amazon, I stopped using eBay, I even stopped using my debit card and carried cash around me to pay for everyday items. So I made spending for myself as inconvenient as possible. If you do that and do it consistently, you'll see a massive drop in your overall spending. So my next tip is stop using credit cards. The whole point and the whole design of a credit card is for you to spend more money than you actually have. It gives you the illusion that you have more money to spend and in doing so you put yourself in debt and that is the complete opposite of saving. I have been working in the banking industry for almost a decade now as a coder, writing programs and working with financial data and I can tell you myself that if you are not using your credit card properly, i.e. paying off the balance every month, then you are paying the most ridiculous interest and getting very little benefit. Next tip is no holidays and no expensive outings. Now I didn't say this was going to be easy and I did say there will be sacrifices. For one whole year, we did not go on a holiday and the only time we went out for expensive dinners was on our birthday. Now, obviously, you can't just sit at home for 12 months and not go out and do nothing. That will make you go crazy. So what we did is we bought a whole bunch of vouchers, a whole bunch of two-for-one dinners and outings that were to places that we'd usually go to anyway. The trick here is to buy this stuff in bulk and then plan your days out in a month or so. Just that simple mind trick worked a treat because it didn't feel like we were giving so much up in there. Next tip, 
switch to a cheaper supermarket. We made a switch from Tesco to Aldi and on average we were saving around £30 per shop. In fact, we never actually went back to Tesco because the quality of Aldi is just that good. Next tip, make your own lunch and coffee. I personally had a serious problem with this because at work I was spending on average around £15 per day on lunch and coffee. Seriously guys, I was spending £10 on salads, I was spending £3 on that stupid coffee from Costa Coffee and Starbucks or whatever it was, okay? So just that simple thing of making my own lunch bringing food in from home i managed to save personally around 300 pounds per month next tip is get rid of the car after the cost of housing i truly believe having a car is without doubt the second most expensive thing you can have so let's think about this logically guys first you've got to buy the car then you've got to insure it then you've got to put mot you've got to make sure it's got road tax and then you've got to fill petrol up with it every time you use it what if your car breaks down what if your tires wear out or worse what if you get into an accident or get into a crash you have to ask yourself is it really worth having that car or can you just slum it for a while and use public transport it's definitely worth considering so guys, that's all the tips I've got for you today and I really hope you find them useful. And remember guys, you should be aiming to save around 40 to 60% of your total income after tax every year if you want to be in a good financial position. The older you get, the harder it will be to save. So make the most of your younger days and just enjoy being young and free. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.